Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to TST Radio. I am your host, Marcus Johnson. Um, our hot topic today is going to be, once again, Auburn's quarterback situation. But my question for the day is, is Jeremy Johnson's era over at Alabama? Um, the reason I'm asking this question is the past press conference, Gus Malzahn expressed that he's going to be going with Sean White at the starting position. He also said that um, John Franklin III will be second string. And his comments, we kind of got the perception that Jeremy Johnson is Kind of going to be lost in the pack, seems like. He was like, Jeremy will be ready when they need him. Um, to me, it sounds like it's over. Um, to me, yeah, it sounds like his his run is over. He's He hasn't proved anything to me. To me, the other game, he pretty much played... He played pretty good to me. I feel like he deserves another shot. I don't feel like he should just get lost in the pack like they're doing with him. Um, I feel like he deserves another shot just like the other two. I don't feel like either quarterback did any better than the other. Um, But it seems like he's pretty much lost. It's over. Um... I don't wish this. I want to see the guy do pretty good, but it seems to me that Gus has got other plans and seems like they're going to move on from Jeremy Johnson. Um, I had a chance to watch him in high school. Uh, The guy has a big arm. He has a good talent, but I feel like at Auburn, he's in the wrong system to be successful. The same as I feel like with the situation at LSU. I feel like they're in the wrong system. Jeremy Johnson has a very big arm. Um, I think he would... I feel like Auburn and LSU swap. Jeremy would be... I think Jeremy would be successful in Les Miles' system. Instead of Ghost Malzahn's system. And I feel like Brandon Harris would be more successful in Ghost Malzahn's system. So, um, yeah. I hate that for the guy, but I really think it's over. I would like to hear y'all comments on that. But, um, yeah, I really think it's over. But uh, we're going to get on to... Uh, The AP polls came out today. Um, They came out. I'm going to give a little rundown on number one, you know, still Alabama. Number two is going to be Clemson. Um, Number three, Florida State. Number four, Ohio State. Number five, Michigan. Number six, Houston, which Houston has... um, they have, they're right now the highest ranked non-conference team right now. They, um, a non-conference team has never been ranked this high in the poll, in the AP poll. So, um, congratulations to the Houston Cougars. Um, coming in seventh, we have Stanford, eighth, Washington, nine, UGA, um, Georgia, number 10, Wisconsin, um, Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee, which we get to laugh at Tennessee once again. Um, Tennessee fell from the eighth spot in the AP poll. Eight spots in the AP poll. They went from nine to 17, which is the largest negative swing for a winning team since 1982. And that's the beginning of the AP era. No one has never dropped that far in the AP poll since the beginning of the AP poll. (laughs) So, 
I feel like they deserved to be dropped that far. A lot of people saying they don't think that Tennessee deserves is too harsh. Blah, 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 blah. No, I think they deserve that. You know, they play Appalachian State. They should have came out and dominated their game with all the talent that they have on that roster. They should have came out and dominated that game. Um, back to uh, back to Auburn. Um, their um, safety, Stephen Roberts, he's been reinstated to the uh, team. He was charged with a uh, unlicensed handgun. Um, Gus Malzahn mm-hmm. did state that he will not start. Um, he wouldn't express how much playing time that he would get. He was very secretive about that. He really, really wouldn't express what, um, how much playing time that he would get. But um, Gus seems very comfortable right now. Gus feels like they're in a good spot, Auburn. They feel like they can be really good right now. They It's still high hopes in that locker room, in that program. They're not down about anything. Um, Kevin Steele reported that he's very impressed with his uh, starting linebacker group. Um, he feels like the defense is doing great. The players feel like, after watching film, that they made very few mistakes. They don't feel discouraged at all. Um, I saw some stats. Well, really and truly, Auburn beat um, Clemson on paper. Stats wise, they they beat Auburn. I mean Clemson. So um, it really wasn't a bad game by Auburn. It really wasn't a bad outing for Auburn. So um, they're feeling very comfortable right now with their program. So um, I'm ready to see how they regroup from the loss. Um, Mississippi State, uh, Dan Mullins um, did a press conference today. He's um, he's saying after watching film that he's saying he feel like his team has issues everywhere. Um, Say so, um, they need to be very, very more consistent. He's saying that their problem is being cons- consistency. Um, he's very positive. He's uh, he seems very positive about his team also. Um, Texas uh, moved up in the uh, ranking there at the highest ranking since 2012 in the AP poll. Uh, this is re- this is the highest that they've been under Charlie Strong. Also, um, Wisconsin they made a big jump in the AP poll. Uh, this is the largest jump from a um, unranked team in a while after they beat they knocked off um, LSU this past. Weekend. Um, LSU, they're seeming to making some changes on their um on their sidelines. Um, I know this year the first time that Cam Cameron has ever been on the sideline. So um, but this week uh they expressed that Cam Cameron will be going back to the press box. Uh, Les Miles feels that. They're not getting enough information that they was getting while he was in the press box. Um, Les Miles also stated that he will soon, if no progress change, considering making a quarterback change. Um, He's saying that um, Brandon Harris doesn't have forever to make progress, but I don't feel like it's Brandon Harris's fault. I feel like it's Les Miles' fault. I feel like it's Coach South, but um, I guess he's going to blame it on Brandon Harris, but um, I feel like it's Coach staff needs to make changes. Um, switch um, topics. Uh, Lane Kiffin, uh, you know, this past recruiting season, he's been on Twitter a lot. He was just on Twitter today. I seen um, that he's bragging about all the Records that's been broken since he's been at Alabama. He um, tweeted, progress equals records, and he posted a picture of the record book. You can check that out on my, um, you can check that picture out on my Twitter page. Um, 
at True Sports Talk. You should go by and check that out. You should get a good laugh at um that um Florida um Coach McElwain, he seems very, 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 very confident. Um, he seems to be ready for. He said like his team is very, very ready for um, this matchup with um Kentucky. It'll be their first um uh, SEC matchup this season. So um, let's get to some uh, high school football. Um, Montgomery Quarterback Club named their Player of the Week. Um, Jake Lang from Park Crossing. And Blake Underwood from St. James, they got the honor of being named Montgomery Quarterback Club Player of the Week this week. Um, they have released my, uh, the state's rankings for um, Alabama. I have um, 7A, 6A, 5A, and 4A here. I'm going to read some of the rankings out Um we're going to start with 7A. Number one at 7A is McGill Tulin at 3-0. and um, And second, we have the 3-0 and Spain, Spain Park. We have um, Hewitt Trussellville, 3-0. and uh, We have Hoover, who is 2-1. and Then we have Central Phoenix City at 2-1. and We have Bob Jones at 2-1. And, and we have Lee. Montgomery coming in two and zero. Um, then we have Murphy. Then we have Thompson. Then we have James Clemens. Then six um, A coming in your number one spot. We have Clay Chalkville. Then we have Blunt Spanish Fort Opelika Oxford um, Garnsdale. Park Crossing, Bessemer City, and Hartsell. And um your Wetumpka Indians, um your two and one Wetumpka Indians, they only received two votes. So um with a win over Stanhope that should give them a edge and get though get them in the ranking. Uh five A we have um the number one spot we have Jackson. We have um Saint Paul's Russellville, Beauregard, then we have Gunnersville, Central Clay, Brooks, and Scottsboro. So um those are some um those are some teams that uh seems to be off to a good start this year. Um they're making a lot of noise in the high school football era right now, um, in Alabama, which is a big thing right now in Alabama. Like I said, I still expect my Indians to do very, 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 very well in um, this upcoming season. Um, they, Like I said, they're taking on Stanhope, Elmore, in Stanhope this week. Um, I have a couple more, some games that I'm going to be paying attention to with high school this weekend. Um, like I said, we have Stan, we Tonka at Stanhope. Then we have Prattville at Auburn. Then we have Lee at versus Smith Station. Then we have um, Tallahassee at Chittersburg, Alabama. Then we have Carver versus Dothan. Then we have Park Crossing at Northview. Northview, I'm sorry. Then we have Elmore County at Hanley. Um, I'm gonna be trying to get some. Uh, stay tuned. We're gonna have some um, interviews for some of these high school guys also. I'm going to try to get some in this week, get them posted this week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you uh, for tuning in. This is our time for the day. I would like for uh, you to follow us on Twitter at True Sports Talk. Join our uh, Game Day fan page at uh, TST Game Day fan page. Like our business page at um, True Sports Talk Radio. Or you can send me a friend request to my personal page at Marcus Darrell Johnson. Again, this is TST Radio. I am your host, Marcus Johnson. Thank you for tuning in.